show where wine is dumb and beer rules. I'm your host, Dr. Brewski, and with me is my special guy, Mr. Handy Candy. Hello, it's football weekend, Super Bowl. And we're going to start off with my favorite part of the show, beer reviews. It's beer review time. All right, it's beer review time. We are, uh, have got like four totally different beers tonight. We've got a stout, we've got like a sh summer shandy, we've got a Hefeweizen, and we got a winter ale. So I mean, we are going plethora. Yeah, we're all over the map. We are all over the map tonight. So the first one we're gonna start with is from Southern oh. Tier. They're out of New York, and it's called Old Man Winter. And it's a winter ale. Handy uh, made me that little uh, bottle opener with a CNC machine, right? Laser engraver. Laser engraver. All right. He's so handy. Old man winter. Here we go. Uh, ABV on this is 7.5%, so it's definitely it's, going to make us warm tonight, right? It's dark. Yeah, it's a little darker. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, kind of caramely color. Yeah. Lots of carbonation. Wow. It smells great. Oh, yeah. It smells good. I'm trying to smell if there's like any kind of spice to it, but I don't really think so. Hmm. Okay. Cheers. All right. Hmm. She already gulped it. Cheers. Oh, yeah. That's nice. That's good. Not too whiny. Mm -mm. Sometimes you get that wine flavor when you get up there in the ABV. Mm. That's actually pretty good. Very uh, caramely. I'm surprised. I, I like I, it. I wasn't sure I was going to like it. Go New York. But uh, wow, that's pretty good. Mm. Got full body. Full body, lots of carbonation, uh, and definitely caramely. Good. Old man winner. Okay. Southern tier. Okay. Uh, handy, your review of old man winner from the New York guys is... 84. 84. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, my review for the Old Man Winner by Southern Tier is I'm going 7.9. A little bitter for me, and the ABV kind of scares me a little bit because then I can, you know, I afraid, might not be able to enjoy the whole control. thing. I might be able to uh, be napping later if we get too out of control. No. So uh, if you drink beer at all, then you've you've had this before. So one of the most famous places in uh, Munich is the Hofbräu House, which we've been to. Historically known for one of Hitler's first speeches, and they still have the platform up above. Yep. They don't celebrate it though. Yeah, you can sit. You can see it on the same stage as when Hitler gave it one of his speeches. <laughs> Creepy. So this is their Hefeweizen. And the ABV on this is 5.1%. I, so, I was surprised that oh, that was that high. So this is a wheat, wheat ale. And it comes from Munich, Germany. One of my favorite places for beer. It's one of the world's famous. It's the beer favorite places Mecca, for beer. Right? Yep. So a um, little lighter. A little lighter, um, orangey color, because mm. that's a you know a wheat beer. What does it smell like? Like perfection. Banana clove. A could little you, bit lighter. If you could say perfection was a scratch and sniff in the dictionary, it would be this beer. It would be the Hefeweizen. All right. Cheers, honey. Yep. Mmm. Yep. A little more maybe bubblegummy than it is banana clove. Don't, what do you think? don't ever call Hoffer House bubblegummy again. Well, Hefeweizen's, it's either bubblegum or um, clove and banana. It's clove and banana, and it's gorgeous. 
Yeah, it's it's good. Mm. Very refreshing. Uh, a lot of carbonation. Very light. Really good. That's what beer is supposed to taste. But like. very strong flavor. Like you better like the Hefeweizen. So who do you think's gonna win this weekend? You got Eagles versus Mahomes and uh, Kansas City. Well, I really want the Eagles to win because their head coach went to Mount Union. Go Purple Raiders! That's where we went. No, that's where you went. Well, that's where I went. <laughs> and Lady Fave IPA also. That's uh, where we met and started true. drinking together. Yeah! So I got a root for Eagles. I don't know, though, because I have KC. family in Kansas City, so I'm going to have to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. So I, I'm going to... And, and barbecue. they got barbecue. Come on. I know. I don't know who's more of a uh, party town. I don't know. Uh, probably Philadelphia. Probably Philadelphia. <laughs> yes. They have a tendency to be rowdy eagles over there. Well, I got to vote for the Matt Union guy, so uh, go Eagles. Um all right, Handy, your rating for the Hefeweizen by Hofbra House is? Has to be a 9-2. 9-2. That is a pure beer, period. That There's is. some that I like, you know, better because I can drink them more, like some of my shandies and stuff, but that is a pure freaking beer. It is good. My review for the Hefeweizen by Hofbra House is? I'm going 8-9. You're an ass. <laughs> They should not ever. <laughs> That's great. They're not even going to let you back in Germany. If, it, if, if this this goes viral, you're not I getting back in. I don't have to go back to the Hofbrauhaus. House. There's other places. I said get in Germany. August They're Steiner. not going to let you in Germany <laughs> for being an asshole. Hey, it's 8-9. That's pretty good. It's a kid show. Watch your mouth. <laughs> All right. God. Next one is a local favorite by Hoppin' Frog, and it's the California Turbo Shandy. <sighs> The ABV on that is seven percent. You make me want to quit. DJ Frog is getting oh up there. Oh my god! Is it grape? What does it smell yes. like? Yes. God. Oh, bless America. Yeah. Mm. Hit me up on that one. Look at the color on it. Oh my gosh! Is that purple? Ish. It's light. Yeah, it's got like a weird color it to it. It almost looks like purple. He's crazy. Oh my god! This is gonna be fantastic. Oh, very sweet smelling. <laughs> it smells like grape soda. Yeah. Yeah, this is a beer that tastes like grape soda. Usually their turbo shandies are. They have tons of different flavors. Wow, Fred is usually, a master brewer. He, he, he knows how mad, to liven it up. He is a mad scientist. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So lots of carbonation and it smells sweet. It smells like Welch's grape pop yep. or Fanta, yep. but really more Welch's because they're really grapey. Oh, it's freaking delicious. That is good. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can get, you'll get trashed on this. 7%, one thinking, can, you'd be like this. Yeah, well, no, you're going to, you're going to think you're drinking grape soda and it's alcohol. Uh, yeah. It is, it is good. Very sweet, but and you got to like the sweet and stuff. And I don't mean like a Mad Dog 2020 for all of us that grew up, <laughs> for all of us oh, that grew God, up in Mad the Dog. 90s. Wow. Not no Mad Dog situation. This mm. is some high quality octane. Mm. This is good. Delicious. Wow. Oh, yeah. The rest of that one's not going to go to waste. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We're going to bed early tonight. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm, that's good. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> that's good any time of the year. If you want something sweet, wow. Hoppin' Frog good. California Turbo Shandy. Wow. Really, really good. Yes, all right, all right, Handy. Your rating for the Hop and Frog California Turbo Shandy is? God, this is right up my alley. This is what I like. I like fruity beers. I know, I'm not afraid Hit to say me. it. What you got? Oh, God, I feel like it would be sacrilegious to place it above Hofbra House. Mm. Rock, between a rock and a hard place. I love you, Hofbra House. Nine four. Nine four. Mm. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. So my rating for the Hoppin' Frog California Turbo Shandy is... I'm going a little bit ahead of you. Nine, five. You should. It was like freaking this, delicious. Oh, my gosh. Probably two of those, and I'd be, like, out. No problem. Taking a nap. Uh, yeah. Delicious. Uh, you could have drink that any time of the year. 
this, but this, definitely a summertime. Two of these and you're making bad decisions in life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right. Last on the list is also from Hop and Frog out of Ohio. And this, they had to make the can really big because the name of it is peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate cake stout. Look at how long that name is. And we've had their cake stouts before and they taste exactly like a piece of chocolate cake. Well, we had the uh, upside down pineapple cake. It tasted one. like a pineapple cake. I'm like, how do you do that? Freaking delicious. It was like they put it in a blender, put a little water in it, threw it in your glass. You could tell it was pineapple and you could tell it had it like a cake type oh, taste it to it. Fantastic. It was crazy. All right, this is crazy. Color. Um, ABV on this is 8%, so all of these are kind of up there, which of course, oh my that's God. what I would think of when it's a winter beer. Fred, you blow my mind, dude. And I uh, want to take a shout out to uh, Snoop. Snoop Dogg in the house. What's up? Pour out a little liquor. Yeah. All right, smell let me this. smell this. Oh my God, it smells like chocolate cake. It's so good. I'm telling you, if you guys haven't tried Hoppin' Frogs, you're missing life. Like I said, Fred is an absolute genius. They're in over like 100 countries. Yeah, it's huge. When we did our amazing. interview with them, he was going in South Korea. Yeah. I was like, you are crazy. I'm a little old Akron, Ohio. Kim Jong. Yeah, well, that's North Korea. They're in South Korea. I didn't say Kim Jong ill. I didn't say mm. Kim Jong. Mmm. You gotta be kidding me. You have to be kidding. This is your, this is birthday drink right here. You can taste the nuttiness of it. It has a chocolatey flavor. But you feel like you just swallow chocolate cake. Right. And usually stouts are more coffee. Oh. I'm not getting coffee. I get, no, I get the coffee. I, I can smell it's that. It's more like a, a I get mocha. The, I get, yeah. It's more because like a sugary mocha. Because you got the mocha. chocolatey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And the caramel. Mm. Almost like tiramisu. Yes. Yeah, tiramisu-ish. Yes. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. Mm. Wouldn't you say? I like it. Man. All right, Handy. Your rating for the Hoppin' Frog peanut butter hazelnut caramel chocolate cake stout is... Wow, 8-8. Eight, eight. Woo, 8-8. Eight, eight. That's delicious. That is good stuff. That's good. It's very strong, though. Um, my rating for the Hoppin' Frog blah, 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 cake stout is... I'm going 8-1. I mean, it's delicious. It's just not my... It wouldn't be my go-to. Well, no, but it's delicious. Rate it on what you're tasting right That's now. That's why I'm giving it an eight one. Yeah. Yeah. You're out of your mind. Mm. It was good, but ooh, God, that'll put you yeah. over. You can tell though if you drank that whole thing. TT night night. Next up, we're going to talk about mashing. Stay tuned. Woo! So two shows ago, I started talking about the brewing process and the first step is to do malting, okay? So they, the brewers begin uh, growing the sprouts on either the wheat germ or the, um, the barley and then they stop it. And the next thing that they do is called mashing. So we're gonna read from the uh, beer book for dummies by uh, Marty Natural. Uh, go ahead. Mashing. After the malt is in the mash tun, the brewer infuses it with hot water, just like making a couple thousand pots of tea. Quite often, a bluer, a bluer, <laughs> a, looks like brewer. A, looks like the beer is getting to me. <laughs> a brewer blends you know, several different read. kinds of malt or specialty grains to achieve unique colors and flavors. He then measures the water's pH and adjust as necessary. Together, the grist and the water create a thick porridge called a mash. Strict time and temperature controls help the eff effectively con helps to confect conf effectively convert the starches to natural sugars within the kernels of the grain. Oh, she poured it all in there. We're Ooh. finishing the turbo shandy, it's baby. Empty. 
All right, when the brewer determines... It's almost purple. I know, it's so good. When the brewer determines that the mash is complete, he transfers the thick, sweet, sticky oh. wort, that's mm. what it's called then, that liquid, as the malt juice is now called, over to the brew kettle for the boil. Depending on the mashing method, the brewer either drains the liquid through a false bottom that keeps the grain in the mash tun, or if the beer is a lager, he transfers it first to a louder tun, which is built like a giant kitchen colander. The grain now is spent grain, and is no longer of use to the brewer after mashing. So the brewer often sells or donates it to local farmers to be used as hog slop. Some brew pubs also use the spent grain to bake high fiber bread. So a lot of them will do like pizzas, black mm. breads. Mm -mm -mm. And that way they're still using, you know, why, why buy new stuff. Wow. Next up, Beer quiz. It's quiz time, quiz time. Quiz time, quiz time. All right, here we go for beer quiz. Question number one. Which yeast byproduct makes beer bubbly? Don't look at my answers. Is it A, <laughs> nitrogen? Is it B, carbon dioxide? Or is it C, oxygen? Oh. CO2, N2, or O2? B, CO. And the answer is, yes, it's carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide. That's not no, CO. No, that's what I report on at home It's not CO, it's CO2. Uh, it's formed when the yeast consumes the natural sugars in the malt. <clears throat> and then it gives off alcohol, and it also gives off the bubbles. Question number two. Used as a bittering, flavoring, or stability, uh, uh, stabilizing agent, the plant humulus lupulus mm. is a species of A, hops, B, yeast, or C, barley. Say the word again. Humulus lupulus. Is that Latin? That is Latin for it's the species name. H and H, so you gotta go hops. And the answer is, it is definitely hops. Uh, that's just one of the main um, mm. plant species names for it. Mm. Question number three, traditional Japanese beers like Sapporo and Ashai are unusual in that one third of their grains come from what crop? Rice. The answer is, <laughs> that is correct, rice. So we had wheat, it's rye, Japan. and rice. They've got rice wrappers, right. rice, soy, everything, right? But that's what makes Bud Light, Coors Light, and all of that light beers. All of the light beers take out some of the barley and they put rice in. And that makes them lighter in calories and, um, you know, flavor all of it. It kind of dilutes them, huh. which we don't want. We want real beer. Barley. Real beer. And we want wheat. Real beer. Yeah. So that's it for the show. Went pretty quick. Uh, we're going to have fun this weekend uh, watching football. Maybe we'll have Lady Faye and her group come over and drink some beers and Watch some football. So whoever you are rooting for this weekend, make sure you go out and get some multi beverages and hit share up, with them. Hit up Hoppin' Frogs. These two hit do up not some Hoppin' Frog. Uh, they're Actually, at Acme. That's where I got those from. Nothing there disappoints. Nothing there disappoints. Their food's real good too. Oh, it's awesome. But go have a multi beverage with somebody and watch the ball game this weekend. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, uh, so you don't subscribe, miss anything. Subscribe, like. And hit the little dingy bell so you get all the notifications. Ding a ling, ding a ling, ling, ling. And remember, don't worry, be happy!